Hey, my name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living. Um, and I have a cold, so my voice is all messed up, so you'll have to deal with that. But I'm doing something today that I don't often do, because when people ask me to make palm key risers or side key risers, I typically tell them uh, that it's best if they just do it themselves versus pay me my normal hourly rate to do something that they can probably do a pretty good job of themselves. There's a few different ways to do it. Uh, Sugru, S-U-G-R-U, is one way that's really easy. Um, it doesn't look great, but it's super duper easy. Another way to do it is to take uh, is to use um, like plumber's putty. The two part epoxy comes in like a tube. The outer is gray, the inner is black. Usually, and you cut off a chunk and you mix it together, and it hardens in like five minutes. Um, and the way you can use that is to take a piece of saran wrap, wrap it over the key, um, and then you put some oil on your fingers, and you take the putty and you shape it how you want it over the saran wrap. Um, the oil keeps it smooth so little chunks don't break off on your fingers and it leaves a smooth finish on the uh, putty, which looks nice. And then when it hardens, uh, you just pop it right off because it's adhered to the saran wrap rather than the key. Then you peel the saran wrap off, you put contact cement on the key and on the riser, pop it on, and you've got a epoxy riser that isn't going to damage the finish when you want to remove it. But I don't love the way those look. Um, so the way I do it usually, if uh, I cannot prevail upon a customer to do it themselves, is the way I'm about to show you now, which is a cork riser, which you, ma you make out of layers of cork on top of the key here, um, but with an epoxy overcoat. So the things you need to make this type of riser the way I make it is your palm key. Make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, couple pieces of cork of different thicknesses, really thin stuff and then like medium stuff, a bunch of really sharp razor blades, contact cement, and five minute epoxy. And what we're going to do is paint uh, the key. And by the way, you might notice I'm looking at a different key here than I'll use in the rest of the video. I deleted by accident the first video I made. Um, and there's, the video you're about to watch is like a series of videos, and I deleted the first one by accident, so I'm redoing my intro. Um, where was I? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is paint the palm key with contact cement, paint a large section of cork with contact cement, just one side, not both sides, because we need to manipulate it. Um, and we are going to apply it to this key here, and what we're gonna do uh, is apply it and kind of wrap it to this curvature here and then we're going to try and cut it flat and we're going to do that a couple times until we've got a nice flat surface. If we just keep applying cork onto this curvature, the curvature actually will get uh, steeper and steeper until the cork uh, won't stick around the edges. So you take your contact cement and you paint the key. Make sure it's all the way around all the edges. And then you paint yourself a nice sized section of the cork. Enough to cut out, you know, at least five or six uh, slices. That'll fit onto the palm key. Okay, and then we're going to wait for that to dry. Okie dokie. So now we are going to go ahead and take our first layer, and what we're going to try and do is put a couple layers on and shave off the top until we get ourselves a flat working surface. If we just keep wrapping it around this curvature, then it's going to get more and more domed and the stuff isn't going to want to stick to itself. And this is also why we start with thin cork, because we need it to flex around this curvature and stick. You take a sharp razor. Oops, that's not my sharp razor. Here's my sharp razor. And go around the outside. Doesn't need to be exact right now. In fact, it's better if it's not. Okay, and I'm also going to go right down the middle.
and take a step towards making that flat, right? And then paint that spot in the middle. And we'll let that dry. All right, second layer. Should be a little easier than the first if you did a good job smoothing out that doming. And I'm going to need a new razor blade already. Okie dokie. All right, now it's getting pretty darn close to flat, so. Go ahead and put some more contact cement on here. Hopefully not as much as last time. There we go, that's better. And from here on out, it'll be a lot easier. And we'll wait for this to dry. All right, let's do the third layer. And this one I don't think we're gonna need to shave at all. Yeah, it's pretty much getting to be where it's flat. That's what things look like right now, right? And go ahead and paint this contact cement. And you see how we've turned that really steep dome into a fairly nice flat curve? That's what you want. Okay, now I've got some slightly thicker cork. Now that it's nice and flat, I can actually use that. And we will start adding thickness much quicker. So I'm just gonna do a couple more layers like this and we're not gonna make you watch that part. Okay, so now I've got my cork thickness built up. I'm gonna take a nice new sharp razor blade and go ahead and give it pretty close shape to what you want as your final shape. And if you screw up here, or if I screw up here, then you're going to hear a lot of cursing, or actually you'll never hear anything because I'm going to curse and I'm going to throw a hissy fit and then I'm going to never publish this video. Because I'd have to start over. There's really not anything you can do about it if you mess up at this point. Which is why a sharp razor blade is super nice to have. And 
And of course, if you're doing this yourself, at this point, you can start customizing it to exactly what you would like to feel under your fingers. And you can see I'm sort of recreating some of that doming that we took away purposefully in the beginning of this video. Okay, that's a nice start. And then I'm gonna take some sandpaper and smooth this out. I'll show you some of this process on camera, but it's kind of boring to watch. Just take, I use 220 grit. And just carefully rub the edges smooth. And you can see I'm staying away from the key. Sorry if I keep going out of view, it's kind of hard to do this with my hands wrapped around either side of a camera. And especially at this point, I really want to make sure that I'm not like accidentally touching the key. So I'm going to go ahead and keep doing this off camera because it would be a lot easier to have the control that I need to have without having the camera in the way, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we have a pretty nice looking cork riser. Um, it's a really nice shape as far as I'm concerned. That's a nice height for this particular instrument. All the edges are rounded. It feels a lot like the key. It's very comfortable. Um, and sometimes people will stop here when they're making cork risers. You can paint this with clear nail polish to seal it. Now the thing I like to do is actually to go ahead and take five minute epoxy to use as a sealer. And what you do is you just take your five minute epoxy and you squeeze out the correct proportions Oop. onto some paperboard. Business card works fine. Construction paper works fine. Regular paper will not work fine. And go ahead and a little bit too much of this. Go ahead and mix it together. And you'll get a feel for this after you do it once or twice. Um, and use this to paint the riser. And just get like a decently even coverage. And it's going to be real sticky and thick and that's fine. If you start applying it shortly after you make it, it will run a little bit and smooth itself out. And that's what we want. Want to kind of be even all the way around, no like huge empty spots, no huge blobs. And you can see it kind of smoothing itself out. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, oh, there's a little bit in the front, a little bit missing right here. Okay, now you can see like as you hold this, um, it runs like a little bit and in the beginning it's going to be a little more viscous. You can actually sort of see it changing shape. Oops, sorry that was out of view. You can see it like changing shape and just kind of like float it around a little bit if you need to prod a little bit like on this side right here. This is not all the way down. I want that to be all the way down to the bottom. Kind of sealing that in.
but you kind of hold it in a couple different directions. Make sure it is everywhere you want it to be, because it won't, it'll run along itself really well, but it won't run onto like dry spots. So just make sure you've got full coverage. And then just sort of like hold it in a couple different attitudes. Oh, there's a dry spot in the front. And you can actually see pretty well there. We'll watch. See how that sort of fills itself in. And then flip it back around. And so what I'll be doing is sort of just like rotating this in a couple different directions and you can see it like thinning out and you can watch it like gather. And gravity and the viscosity of the epoxy will kind of give you a nice, even, rounded coat over the whole thing. And this is why you use 5 minute epoxy versus 2 ton epoxy, because that takes too long to cure. And what you want to do is just get yourself like a nice, even coat. So I'm going to be doing this for a couple minutes, and then I will put it in a soft jawed or a smooth jawed vise to do the rest of the way. And I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. Oh, there's a little bubble at the top. See that little empty spot right there? And you can also use your, you know, the stuff you've mixed on your paper stock as a good gauge to see what the viscosity uh, is of the uh, stuff you put on the key. Because you obviously don't want to be like messing with the key once it's hardened enough that it won't flow and self-correct anymore. then it'll be sloppy. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of rotate this thing around for a little while until it starts getting hard enough that it's not really moving a lot and then I'll mount it in a vise and I'll show you that. Part. Okay, so we can see here, hopefully, yep, that I've got it lightly mounted in a smooth jaw vise and I'll flip this a couple times and just let it sort of flow up and down and it'll be nice and even, hopefully, by the time it finishes. Um, and I'm just kind of cleaning up and as I let this dry. And you'll get a feel for it after you do this once or twice, um, how much time you can leave it. Because obviously at a certain point, if, it, you know, if you've got a big blob on it or something and you turn it around, uh, it's going to be dried and it's not going to actually move anymore. And it's just about time for me to flip it anyways. So it's flipped. And drying again, or curing, I guess is the correct word. We can see here, this is the stuff we mixed. It's getting pretty thick, kind of almost like a paste-like consistency. So it's going to stop flowing pretty soon. But I need to keep an eye on it. Until this is like hard, I mean, I can bend this paper right now. Uh, it'll still keep flowing, so I need to keep an eye on that key. Okay, at this point, it has pretty much stopped moving. And I will usually allow it to finish its drying upside down because that just helps smooth out the overall contour. If you do it uh, the final cure right side up, sometimes you can get ridges along the edge. But if you do it this way, it'll end up nice and smooth. And here we have it. This is the finished product. Uh, so this is a cork and epoxy riser I made. This has a lot of the strengths or a lot of the benefits of a cork riser, namely the shape and the appearance without the drawback of uh, it being delicate uh, or gathering uh, oils and dirt from your hand. It has a lot of the strengths of an epoxy riser, namely the uh, durability. I mean, you can wash this. This is basically indefinite. Um, without the drawback of it possibly affecting the finish or being difficult to remove. If you ever do want to remove this, all you got to do is apply some gentle heat right here and this will pop right off without any problem. So that is a cork and epoxy riser, like I make them. Um, like I said before, I have no idea if, the, I mean, this might be like a really dumb method. It takes me a while, but it is what I like to do. So the times where someone asks me to make a riser for them, um, this is typically what I describe to them. It's fairly easy, a little bit time consuming. It's not something you really need to pay me to do. 
Um, you can do it yourself if you feel like it. All you really need is just a couple simple materials that once you have, you can make your own risers all the time. But uh, if you end up paying me to make a riser, this is the kind of thing that I am often going to be uh, doing for you. So my name is Matt Storr. I repair saxophones for a living. Hopefully you found this uh, helpful, useful, and informative. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch in the comments below, or you can send me an email, or you can give me a call. Thanks for watching. In case you wanted to see what it looked like on the horn.